Assalamu uh, alaikum. Uh, welcome and everyone on board. Uh, apologies, actually, I was just not uh, feeling good. So initially, I was not getting the courage to send the link. But finally, anyways, I send, send the link. Uh, today, uh, we will just uh, have a look on this topic of trauma. Uh, uh, Sundas, have you read this topic uh, of trauma? No, sir. Okay. Um, Actually, this uh, trauma question is, uh, you can say that uh, part and parcel of uh, any any anesthesia exam. And I have just uh, tried to chalk out some of the aspects and I'll give you a brief introduction and we will continue this topic uh, tomorrow, inshallah, because tomorrow, today I am uh, a little uh, tired and sleepy. So, but still I will tell you uh, something uh, usually uh, in uh, different uh, scenarios uh, it may be uh, just give me a second please. just give me a second please. Uh, so usually uh, the I will tell you some basic principles, and that trauma um, may be form may be come in the form of polytrauma, okay, and may they they can present you for for example isolated long bone fracture, or uh, they can say isolated head injury, but uh, there are some basic principles uh, which you should just keep in your mind whenever you are answering this question or even when you are dealing, okay? Because even if there is head injury, immediately uh, you will see the mode of injury, okay? And um, whatever is the scenario is, uh, you will actually, you cannot rule out neck injury, cervical spine injury, okay? Uh, cervical C spine injury. If... Uh, there are certain there are certain rules for it. There is one uh, Canadian C spine uh, uh, rule, and there is one nexus criteria. Okay, so whenever there is head injury, uh, I will just show you. So actually, a DEXIS criteria is to rule out uh, uh, cervical spine injury, okay? So uh, whenever there is any of, like you have to rule out these things, uh, only then you can say that this patient does not have uh, involvement of C-spine, that there is some cervical tenderness or there is a focal neurological deficit, altered level of consciousness, intoxicated like there is some sign of intoxication of any drug or any addictive material and there is some other painful distracting injury so how to interpret this is that if, if there is cervical tenderness you cannot rule rule out the uh, uh, head like uh, uh, involvement of c-spite similarly if there are some no focal neurological deficit still you cannot rule out cervical spine injury if there is Alter level of consciousness, you cannot rule out. And if there is like distracting injury, like for example, patient has some other fracture. So now, even if there is nothing is there, still you cannot rule out in polytrauma patient 
C spine. So, uh, so the, the you have to uh, uh, make sure that all, all other these things are not there. And then there is uh, because initially some of the injury will not be apparent in even in the uh, radiological study. Okay, so you will get you will uh, immobilize the neck. The big six rule is that you will put the uh, C spine uh, C like uh, cervical collar. And if you are dealing, handling the patient by any means, you have you are transferring the patient from uh, one place to other place, or you are uh, handling the airway, you have to do the MILS, manual inline stabilization, and you have to avoid uh, excessive uh, manipulation of neck. Okay, so this is the basic rule. There is another criteria: Canadian uh, C spine. Almost uh, it it is uh, the same. Uh, Canadian C spine. So it has uh, a little bit, a uh, few different things. Uh, you will see here. Uh, just a second, please. Can uh, do anyone remember uh, what is the uh, components of uh, C uh, Canadian C spine rule? I think it's not uh, properly written here. I will show you inshallah uh, tomorrow. Okay, uh, so either you have to rule out with the uh, this. Uh, uh, nexus criteria or Canadian C spine. Okay, uh, so this is uh, one thing. Uh, the other thing will be that uh, you have to like, as I have mentioned here, a number of uh, things. So whenever there is any any um, uh, uh, polytrauma, even for example, there is isolated injury, you have to rule out other. Like it will be based on this uh, ATLS. Uh, uh, rule okay uh, like a b c d e okay in uh, primary survey secondary survey and you, uh, you know about it but usually generally i will tell you that for example if you want to rule out head injury okay or there is a, so you will evaluate on the basis of uh, uh, clinical uh, uh, sign symptoms there may be the the uh, the things associated things with the head injury will be level uh, decrease level of consciousness okay so the, either you will use a a, a v p u or uh, g c s okay uh, this will be one thing then maybe there will be focal neurological deficit in the form of uh, motor loss okay if there is, uh, for example, uh, C-spine, definitely C-spine injury, then it will be associated with the motor loss, uh, quadriplegia or uh, paraplegia, according to the level uh, being involved. And also there will be some spinal shock. Okay. So there will be certain feature with reference to spinal shock. Then uh, if uh, you just think about radiologically, so radiologically, you will find either midline shift Okay, midline shift uh, in the form of like um, um, uh, which will be evident in the in the CT scan, uh, either like extra dural hematoma. Okay, so in that case, maybe you will need immediate uh, bar hole, okay, or uh, craniotomy to relieve the the pressure. Otherwise, there will be bad neurological outcome. So <clears throat> they can ask you this question that how will you uh, even even there will be certain uh, features with, with which you will take the patient for CT scan. Okay, so there will be certain things you need to need to consider. Okay, especially for example, if uh, there is a decreased level of consciousness, patient is irritable, so you might need to uh, like uh, 
maintain the airway first so again all the all the uh, like proper uh, uh, care which you need to do with reference to as i told you mills will be should be there so and all the factors which can possibly increase icp you need to monitor so this this will be uh, this should be in your mind that if you are handling such case uh, the airway management will be a little bit different you need to optimize you may might need to use glidoscope you don't you cannot extend the neck you cannot make the sniffing uh, position which we usually make for intubation so glidoscope will help so see, these are these are the things which you should be uh, considering in in your mind and you will be avoiding like for example succamethonium will be having problem high dose of like if patient is uh, hemodynamically unstable even then ketamine can increase the intracranial pressure if you are using alone if some people try to intubate without you will see this very often that they uh, especially the emergency people or uh, icu people they are trying to intubate the patient without uh, muscle relaxant because they have a lot of fears i don't know why but they sometimes they so it is it will have detrimental effect on icp okay so uh, you should be keeping in mind these things and again all the factors which disturb the icp or uh, create problem you have to consider like co2 o2 temperature okay um you you you, you and cerebral perfusion pressure of course so you will you will you you will need to consider all these things uh, whenever you have patient with suspected head injury because these things will be in your consideration uh, in due course of time either this patient will be shifted to icu if there is no surgical intervention is needed or if there is some correctable uh, problem maybe you need to immediately shift the patient to neurosurgical uh, suit for for re relieving of the pressure so you, next step you uh, it will be this one in your uh, management because uh, in man, uh, many of the hospitals icu and anesthesia is one team okay so maybe you are the person who is dealing from the icu team and you are uh, either taking the patient to operation theater or you are shifting the patient to icu so in either case you should be should be knowing the basic problems and basic uh, things you should be considering okay so this is one thing other other problem which you can face with reference to head injury will be fits okay so like uh, you can have epilep epileptic fits uh, which are associated with uh, like uh, head injury and it's a sign of uh, raised icp one again and again there may be vomiting so if there will be vomiting in a patient with the decreased level of consciousness it can lead to aspiration so you you have to consider these things if there are fits you have to control the fits and again because all the time whenever you are evalu even evaluating the patient not only neurological system will be there you have to all the uh, at the same time you will be considering the cardiovascular system and if there is there are some immediate uh like uh, complication with reference to trauma you need to immediately see like any for example the example will be tension pneumothorax with reference to fractured rib okay so even they will not tell you so you have to tell that even they, there may be some thoracic injury there may be uh, like with reference to fractured rib okay so fractured rib can lead to Uh, like pneumothorax, which may be uh, tension pneumothorax, and uh, you you will you will you need to immediately treat the patient. Otherwise, patient will collapse. Okay. Similarly, there may be hemothorax, and again, uh, in the same scenario, should be thinking as I told you few points about thorax. So there may be cardiac uh, cardiac tamponade if there is cardiac involvement, or if there is some abdominal. So it will also lead to because um, uh, even uh, if there is uh, thoracic uh, bleed okay maybe there will be decrease uh, uh, like, like there will be problem with the respiration but actually abdominal bleed is very dangerous because sometimes it may be hidden there will be nothing okay but the patient if so out of context if uh, patient is uh, not responding to the like uh, fluids or patient is dropping the hemoglobin so you have to rule out 
uh, any abdominal injury. So for that thing, what should be in your mind is fast scan, focus assessment via sonography for trauma. Okay. So this will be done by the surgeon or another thing will be diagnostic peritoneal lavage. This is again, this is like as a part of uh, trauma care, but of course this is uh, domain of the surgeon. So they will be doing it, but you should have a concept that these will be thing or of course CT. Okay. CT with without contrast or with contrast. I am not very good in uh, radiological studies, but they will be doing CT scan to rule out any uh, like uh, uh, any bleeding. Okay. So ultimately, uh, these will be things which you will be considering when you are dealing with a patient with trauma. Some other points again will be uh, where in special care will be needed for pelvic fracture because it will lead to a lot of uh, bleeding and then in majority times whenever there is pelvic fracture there will be involvement of uh, urethra or urinary bladder okay so in that case maybe you will find hematuria and sometimes it is how it is fine how it is found that uh, they are trying to put the folies and you are not able to pass the folies uh, the, the, so in that case like you will consider to have uh, uh, bladder injury okay so in that case they will consider some alternative uh, special because uh, whenever you are dealing with such cases uh, there is multidisciplinary team so never forget to have this word uh, in your answer if you are uh, if asked this question in uh, uh, oral part multidisciplinary team so up till now i was telling these things step by step but the teams which will be involved will be general surgeon neurological team uh, this one urologist okay and radiologist maybe so th these icu of if you consider icu as a separate so icu team will also be there so then orthopedics okay so orthopedics will rule out long bone fracture along with this uh, like uh, uh, pelvic because in in majority of hospital there the hospitals there is a trauma team there is a special trauma people orthopedic trauma they are orthopedic but they are dealing with the, the trauma. So, so there will be long bone fracture, especially, for example, if there is a fracture of femur or fracture of humerus. Okay. So, there will be one to two liter of blood loss at least. So, uh, maybe patient will be hemodynamically, apparent, apparently hemodynamically stable. As soon as they open the fracture, the uh, there will be redistribution of fluid and patient suddenly can go in shock. So, you should be thinking about this thing. Uh, similarly, with reference to, if the, the, all these things will be different because trauma scenario is such a wide scenario. You, uh, you should have everything in your mind. And in the, in the exam, you are not able to uh, cover in your answer all these aspects. Maybe you will uh, lose the numbers. Okay. So, you should be thinking in a way that you, you can make your answer that you will rule out even if there is, they are saying that there is a head injury. So still you will say that I will rule out other injuries like thoracic injury, pelvic injury, abdominal injury, long bone fracture. So your answer should be focusing like that. Do you say you will consider uh, cervical spine injury until uh, it is ruled out with either of the criteria or there is no, uh, like, uh, low, no science like that. Okay. So <clears throat> these are the things which should be. Then very important point in the therapy will be pain okay so you have to control the pain and there are certain uh, uh, blocks which you can give to relief uh, to have pain relief like you can if you there is a femur fracture for example so <clears throat> there is a, a like a, a femoral nerve block you can give or asia iliaca block you can give okay uh, there is another blot its name is tang block Okay, so it is also uh, for uh, for uh, femur fracture or fracture neck of femur. So it will give a pain relief so that you can make position. Even for example, if you think in the, in trauma cases, if you are considering to give, for example, spinal, okay, you need to give any of these block. Otherwise, the positioning of the patient will be difficult. Okay, so you have to give pain relief. This this is one thing. <clears throat> Another. Another thing uh, will be that uh, 
uh, like uh, patient will not be you will not get you will not be able to have the positioning to perform this one without this and maybe that if you don't are not going for regional anesthesia then maybe at some time you need to give a small dose of ketamine of course if there is no other contraindication uh, ketamine or sedate the patient in a way so that you are able to perform the spinal okay so this these things you should you can uh, be you should be considering in your mind so other other blocks with reference to for example fracture rib it's a it's a very challenging and very because why what is the problem that pain wherever uh, in the body there will if there is pain there is uh, chances of patient is uh, doing breath holding there is there is a splinting and it will result in uh, like airway problems but uh, especially if you are uh, uh, like a rib fracture okay you need to treat the pain so you can have this uh, intercostal uh, initial, uh, traditionally people used to give it but these days uh, the, this erector spiny block is very good for the management of uh, fracture rib or uh, pe people can give paravertebral uh, block as well okay so you need because if you don't treat the pain in this reference patient there will be chances of a patient like uh, having respiratory problems so you need to just uh, consider these things okay uh, other aspect will be like with reference to fluid management. So uh, fluid management is very important uh, because, for example, if patient is losing uh, blood, um, uh, if, if there is hidden bleeding or there is apparent bleeding, okay, because trauma will, because one aspect of the trauma will be in the form of blast injuries. They can ask you in that one as well. Or for example, there is open fracture. Okay. So in open fracture, maybe patient is uh, the, the uh, patient is bleeding outside. So in that case, uh, you, you will have apparent bleeding. And in either case, uh, fluid management is very important. Uh, people, uh, some like majority people give uh, normal saline. Okay. But remember one thing that in this scenario, if you are giving too much normal saline, it can, it can cause acidosis. Okay. So it has a lot of chloride. So it, it will cause uh, acidosis. This is one thing. Then uh, if like uh, about imp another important thing will be if you are giving too much cold fluid. So it will it will be like because your your target will be because there is a concept which is also related to trauma care is damage control resuscitation. Okay. Damage control resuscitation. That you don't try to uh, get the ex absolute hemodynamic uh, like goals you are setting a reasonable uh, goals and you are trying to achieve them so uh, and and you're uh, you are preventing trying to prevent lethal triad because if you are uh, giving uh, fluid without any limit so it will be ending in acidosis uh, coagulopathy what is the other one hypothermia okay So this is a lethal triad of uh, trauma. Okay. So if you are uh, like not only trauma of bleeding, you can say. So if you are giving uh, a lot of fluid uh, and you are because maybe all, already hemoglobin is less and you are giving too much crystalloids. So the problem will be that ultimately patient will go in uh, DIC and patient uh, there will be a triad which will lead to demise of the patient. So you have to judiciously good the, of course, you will activate the uh, massive transfusion protocol. Massive transfusion protocol. Because uh, today I am just giving you a, an hour, uh, like uh, you can say a trailer of what are the, uh, what are the components which should be in your mind when you are dealing uh, a patient with trauma, not uh, in uh, in one question, they can ask you all of these things, but if you if you don't have an idea overview of uh, these things, uh, you may you may fault in your answer. Okay, so there will be some investigation which will be needed in this way with reference to bleeding and with reference to fluid management. One will be ABGs, one will be lab. Uh, of course, in 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 the same in lactate will come. Okay, and then uh, if you, you are have any doubt. You will use either tag or rotten. 
to have exactly which uh, 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 blood and blood products are needed. So the, the this will be the the, the basic uh, uh, theme by which you will be uh, handling your patient. Okay. So I I just mentioned about damage control, resuscitation, airway management in trauma, intubation indications. Like there will be certain conditions in which you need to maintain the airway. Of course, it will be related to the like uh, maintenance of the airway. Risk of avoid the risk of aspiration, conscious level, uh, C spine problems. Like there will be so many things which should be in your mind. Mills whiplash injury. We will discuss inshallah later on. Trauma scoring. There are certain scores which are being used. Uh, trauma scoring. There is a system. Okay. Pain management. I told you some of some of the points. Imaging in trauma. Bleeding management in trauma. There will be certain special consideration with reference to pregnant or elderly or pediatric patient. Firearm injury. Firearm injury because in that one there will be more, most probably in majority of cases either if it is abdominal firearm so there will be involvement maybe involvement of any viscera involvement of vascular structure so these are the things okay role of fast cane fracture rib management head injury management and uh, CT scan in head injured patient how to transfer the patient uh, there are considerations maybe the patient need to tra be transferred to a, another unit okay so it will be either uh, patient, so there will be another aspect which they can ask with reference to trauma, uh, transfer from emergency to the CT scan room or from one hospital to the other hospital. So you should be thinking, uh, you, you should be, you should have in these things. In, okay. So there will be special consideration with reference to facial fractures. So there, because there are categories of uh, cat, uh, facial fracture with Lee Ford 1, Leaf 4, 2, Leaf 4, 3. I don't remember exactly the architecture because in these fractures, you will, there will be limitation with reference to uh, like uh, nasal intubation, maybe in certain things because in Leaf 4, 3, you cannot do the nasal intubation and might, might be you need to have tracheostomy. Okay. So there are uh, some similar concern with reference to neck trauma. We will discuss about ATLS and some special consideration with reference to penetrating eye injury okay because in penetrating eye injury again the concerns are with reference to npo with reference to any medications you are giving which can increase the icp and uh, further uh, aggravate the the eye problem so you have to outfit risk versus benefit and some of the, the the common concerns which will be there with reference to eye injury okay so actually today unfortunately i was a little down but still i just thought to to have something so inshallah tomorrow we will formally uh, discuss some of the points with reference to trauma i uh, shared this uh, link i think just a second uh, in in the morning i uh, i had shared this uh, link with the trauma uh, let me show you this one okay so I just try to, uh, you will find almost all the things which I uh, discuss with you. Only the head injury uh, will be there in the neuro. Okay. So thanks a lot, all of you. Uh, we will, inshallah, try to read, uh, especially the Viva candidates, because I will tell you that even if the people, some of the people who are in Saudi Arabia, in the in the consultant evaluation exam, they are always asking one question about trauma. Okay, and uh, in the in the oral exam, like in Pakistan FCPS or MCPS exam, they definitely ask one of the scenario. So there are some other things which they can ask, but I have just tried to to give you a global uh, overview. Okay, and the basic remember this, this thing that whenever there is one trauma, always rule out other trauma. So this is the, the, the take-home message for you. So thank you very much. Uh, Tahir Bhai, you, would you like to, to add something? I think sir is uh, busy somewhere. Uh, so anyways, uh, thanks Sundas uh, because Maybe you you messaged and only then I got the courage as otherwise I was half asleep. So thank you very much, uh, Inshallah. 
uh, we will continue our discussion tomorrow okay uh, so these are uh, the articles which are there in uh, this uh, folder okay so try to have a look and this is actually the atl okay so this is uh, there will be one atls which is a long one and one is the the short one so you you can just have a look here and we will try to discuss the same thing okay uh, the shock and uh, how, how the, the i have given you an overview that what are the the basic things uh, you can face in trauma care this is the whole because uh, some of the bookish points maybe i had missed yes uh, tosif Uh, you want to say something? Yes, Tosif, you have raised the hand. You want to say something? Okay. Anyways, uh, thank you all of you. Inshallah, we will uh, discuss the further aspects from tomorrow. Bye-bye. Assalamu alaikum.